Y'all, I'm making a face. Cause, cause I'm not gonna lie. When I first, you know, pulled up to this, 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 um, this video in itself, the first like 15 seconds or something like that, he said the the International Space Station is actually falling. That's dangerous, especially how large it is. But uh, big vibes. Stay blessed or say less. This is your boy Black Finesse. We're here to watch the list 25, and this is 25 insanely cool facts about the solar system. So we finna uh go ahead and get started. This might be more surprising facts. Than cool facts. Did you know that the International Space Station is actually falling? Or that we're currently moving through space at an average velocity of 67,000 miles an hour? I'm sure we are. Ancient cultures, such as the Chinese and the Greeks, gazed up at the sky in wonder, racking their brains to figure out what was going on up there. They made remarkable discoveries, but we really stepped up our efforts in the 20th and 21st centuries as technology evolved. Today, we'll look at some of the most scientific discoveries and best scientific breakthroughs that made us realize our solar system is even more impressive than we could ever imagine. I'm Mike with List 25. And nah, not gonna lie, when I was young, they made it seem like the solar system, solar system was smaller than what it was. 25. Pluto's heart. We launched the New Horizons space probe on January 19, 2006. Wow. It was the first aircraft to explore Pluto and the Kuiper Belt up close bringing us images of the dwarf planet we couldn't imagine in our wildest dreams. Crazy. Chief among those was Pluto's heart. A surprisingly smooth, crater-free plane. Astronomers believe it's a about very that. young region that was active within the last 100 million years. Less than a heartbeat regarding celestial timelines. I didn't, I didn't know it looked like The frozen plains of Pluto, Pluto are teeming with planetary oddities. Some areas resemble cracked mud flats, while others are unusually hit. It looked like it was hit by Trots a lot of craters. Through the area. I mean, it looked like it was hit by a lot of meteors causing a lot of craters. The seams. Like so, really, really small what's meteors. the deal with Pluto's terrain? We're not really sure yet. It could all be due to convection or a contracting crust. Pluto's surface might be cracking and chipping under the pressures of shifting materials. That is is mad cold. Paint. 24. Hubble Space Telescope. Okay. The Hubble Space Telescope has become one of the world's busiest telescopes. I bet it is. Despite being the size of a school bus, it has looked at areas more than oh, 13.4 billion light years away, meaning that it's seen the light that was present in the cosmos 13.4 billion years ago. That's crazy. Hubble's low Earth orbit, where it travels at 17,000 miles per hour, likewise keeps it within an accessible and safe range for astronauts who have used the space shuttle on multiple occasions to visit the instrument. I heard it's like a bunch of debris in space too, though. Parts over the years. Hubble is currently 326 miles above the Earth's surface. Hello. Wait, what? 23. It's 326 miles above the Earth's surface? No, it's not. Are you sure? Is that close to Earth? I thought it would be further than that. What? A block of lead of, on Venus would... A block of lead on Venus would Venus. melt like a block of ice on Earth. It's true. Its surface is hot enough to melt lead and has sulfuric acid clouds at 860 degrees That's Fahrenheit or 460 Celsius. That's actually but very Venus hot. may have been capable of supporting life at one point in its existence. Over 4 billion years ago, Venus had oceans. In fact, the planet had water for more than 2 billion years. What? Today, Venus is extremely dry with very little water vapor. All of it was destroyed by the sun's solar winds. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. 22. It's hot. Space junk can move at more than 17,500 miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, because an object, object the US in motion Air Force can stay has a motion. dedicated team on hand that has been monitoring and tracking space junk since the 80s. They're currently monitoring more than 47,000 individual objects as big I, as your I, hand. I, I kind of, I kind of wonder why it hasn't moved much further from Earth. It's just rotating around Earth now. It's just like it seems like it's just. It's just rotating around it. Like, but if an object in motion is staying in motion, is it bound to the Earth's gravity or something? That's why it's still rotating around Earth or something? 600,000 are about the size of marbles. And that figure grows on a daily basis. Every single one of these objects is hurtling through space at speeds of 17,500 miles per hour. That I didn't know. kilometers per oh, hour. Oh, so no wonder... Uh... It was a one incident where I think something was wrong with one of the uh, team, the space team's uh, uh, ship or something, and they were trying to survive, and it was taking them a while to get back to Earth. But I didn't realize that at, at that time there was space debris flying around too that could possibly hit them. Oh, okay. Many of them collided with another object, whether a spacecraft. How do y'all get back down to Earth? Then? And how do y'all get out of Earth? The outcome would be disastrous. 
Even something as small as a 1 32nd inch piece of metal could cause substantial damage to a spacecraft or obliterate a crew member during a spacewalk. 21. It takes sunlight about 8 minutes to reach Earth. I mean, we know that. The energy and the rays of sunlight we see today developed in the sun's core 30,000 years ago. Which means that the light we see now is 30,000 years old. <laughs> Imagine that. After leaving the sun, the light spent we the majority of its the time sun eight passing minutes through the ago. dense atoms that make up the sun. And it only took 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach us after its departure. That is a fast flight. 20. Yeah. The International Space Station is falling. Contrary to popular belief, gravity That's scary. exists in space. The ISS can be found between 200 and 250 miles above the Earth, where gravity is approximately 90% that of Earth. This is enough to bring the ISS slamming into the planet. So, what's keeping it from falling? Well, actually, it is falling. However, it doesn't crash into the Earth because the speed at which it falls is nearly equal to the rate at which it orbits the planet, so it simply falls along the Earth's curve. Okay. So the ISS is falling around the Earth. It's moving, though. And it's the same with the moon. It's also falling around the Earth. The ISS's fall is the very reason astronauts on board appear weightless, despite the presence of gravity inside. The astronauts aren't pulled in any particular direction because the velocity at which the ISS falls is basically equal to the rate at which it moves around the Earth. As a result, they simply float. <laughs> How cool is that? It's like those dive planes that simulate gravity. Scary. 19. It would take 177 years to drive to the sun. I'm sure it is. Not that we'd actually live driving. long enough to try it, but if you decide to drive a car to the sun at, say, 60 miles an hour, it would take you over 177 years because to complete the Because it's very far. probably has to be done in a Ford That's how heavy the, the sun is. I'm sure could get there. For us to rotate around You could around also it. decide to go via plane, in which case it would take 19 years to reach the sun. 19. Or you could walk there. It'd only take 3,536 years if only. you can keep up a steady pace of 3 miles an hour, 4.8 kilometers per hour. 18. We've sent messages into space for extraterrestrial I'm civilizations. I'm sure we have. We have not found that. In the early 70s, NASA launched Pioneer 10 and 11 to explore the outer reaches of our solar system. Apart from these scientific instruments, astronauts also included a message to any extraterrestrials the craft might meet along the way. I'm sure there are other the Pioneer extraterrestrials plaque displayed in, in, uh, diagrams of the galaxy. universe, a schematic of hydrogen, and perhaps most interestingly, but a lot of images you don't of get a lot of planets that like are pretty don't ask like me why they thought that made sense. Identical plaques Yeah, you don't get a lot of planets that are actually like The extraterrestrial communication trend continued in 1977 with NASA's Voyager 1 and 2 probes. This time, gold-plated gramophone records, 12 inches each, encoding sounds of nature, languages, diverse images, and music to encapsulate Shit, Earth's you would essence, think that we're ahead of our time. I don't know. Crafts. The cover of the records was inscribed with a lot of the same images as the Pioneer plaque, except that NASA decided to pass on the nude man and woman since it upset so many people the first time around. 17. Neutron stars are spinning at incredible we speeds. We know that. A neutron star is what remains after a star goes supernova. They're incredibly small and dense neutron balls that are truly remarkable. When neutron stars are born, they can rotate at least 60 times per second. The rotation rate can reach over 600 times per second if they're part of a binary system. Because of their extreme density, any atoms that touch them may get torn apart almost instantly. At the same time, any remaining subatomic particles are dispersed before being rearranged into neutrons. Yikes. This process yields so much energy that a meeting between a relatively small asteroid and a neutron star would produce a gamma ray explosion with more punching power than our sun will deliver throughout its lifetime. Yikes. Consequently, any neutron star that comes even close to our solar system poses a real danger of causing lethal radiation damage to the Earth. Or we'll just all become hulks. Cool. 16. The stars are probably uncountable. I'm According to sure NASA, they are. there are zillions of uncountable stars. Yeah, much and more no, than that. A zillion is not just a fun term kids use, it's actually the name for an uncountable amount. Who knew? Z. However, according to the other competent star enumerator, <laughs> that's a fun word to say, there could be about 3,000 million billion stars. That is a 30 with 15 zeros behind it. 15. Planets are made of rock or gas. Yes. Terrestrial planets, as you might have guessed, are comprised of rock or metals and possess a solid surface. If we are determined enough, we could probably land on them. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all terrestrial planets. Yep. Gas Even giants, Pluto. on the other hand, are entirely made of, well, gas. 
No amount of determination will change the fact that if we were to try and land on one of these gas puppies, we'd probably sink into the planet towards their magnetic cores, and will most likely puppies. be crushed by thousands of cubic tons of pressure if we're not torn apart by a hurricane-level winds first, which is a common side feature. Yeah. The gas giants include Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune, and Uranus. But scientists propose that there Uranus. could be a third type of planet, a Chthonian planet, which is the result of a gas giant getting too close to its sun. Why you just sun. pronounce it its atmosphere would evaporate, leaving only its Why core is behind, C-H-T-H? naked to the, eye of the cosmos. However, we've yet to discover such a planet, so for now, it remains theoretical. 14. It's hard to define a planet. It might be hard to believe, but our brightest minds can't agree on defining a planet. The current criteria says a celestial body can only be a planet if it orbits the sun, it's spherical, it should have cleared its orbit of other bodies. The problem is that the definitions need to be broadly applied, leading to a massive rift in the world of astronomy. Okay. The idea of defining a planet simply as a natural object in space with a mass sufficient to make it roughly spherical is one idea. A simple definition, however, does not include the degree of roundness an object must possess to be considered round. The criteria will be updated again in the future, but for the moment, thousands of IAU members remain disgruntled about the definition. 13. We are moving through space at hundreds, hundreds of thousands, thousands of miles, miles per yes, hour. Yes, we said this already. We live in a universe that is a living contradiction between speed and atrophy. Despite well, the fact that, you said that it, it took we billions of years know. for our solar system to reach this precise moment in time, it currently travels around the Milky Way galaxy at 514,490 miles, or 828,000 kilometers per hour. Yikes. Every second of every day. And somehow it's all being kept together. That is bonkers. That's how and heavy the black hole is. And it 230 million years for one orbit around the Milky Way to be completed at that speed. Yeah. Twelve. The solar system's tail. If it was hard to wrap your head around the last item, well, the next one will tail? make your head explode. What do you mean tail? One decade ago, way back in 2013, <laughs> NASA revealed that one of its missions successfully mapped our solar system's tail, which just so happened to look like a four-leaf clover. Mm. The helio tail, as they've come to call it, is made up of neutral okay. particles that cannot be seen using traditional methods. As a result, specialized instruments were required to image the particles before scientists pieced the individual images together to create an integrated picture. The image showed that our solar system's helio tail expanded more than 8 billion miles or 13 billion kilometers beyond the most distant planets, with fierce winds causing materials to stream in all directions at speeds of more than 1.6 million kilometers or 1 billion miles per hour. Mind blown. And if you enjoyed that fact, be sure to stick around for the final three on today's list. And that's interesting. Mind-boggling. 11. Will Saturn actually float in water? Saturn has such a low density that if you put it in a large glass of water, it would float. Saturn's density is 0.687 grams per centimeter cubed, while water's density is 0.998 grams per centimeter cubed. So does density mean heavy? Since Saturn has a radius of 36,183.7 miles, I think you're going to need a huge glass of water to test it out. NASA, get on it. Go put <laughs> yeah. Saturn in water. You can create a, a, a very large glass socks, that's bring a hat. 100 times bigger Mars, than Earth. like Earth, has four seasons. However, unlike Earth, where each season lasts three months, the length of Mars's seasons varies depending on the hemisphere. Mm. To provide some context, a Martian year has 668.59 solar days, close to we are not the same. Earth I am days, and nearly two times longer than an Earth year. Spring lasts seven Earth months in the Northern Hemisphere, summer six, fall 5.3, and winter just over four Earth months. Because the atmosphere is so thin, the sun's heat easily escapes. So if you happen to find yourself near Mars's equator at noon, it would be spring at your feet, or about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and wintertime at your head, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Nine, Nine. the moon is lemon-shaped. Yes. Did you know that the moon is shaped like a lemon? It's not shaped it's like not a It's not round lemon. at all. Most moons and planets are created by revolving magma orbs, leading to their spheroidal shape. These are old women, not Scientists a lemon. believe that our moon was formed when an object more or less the size of Mars collided with the newborn Earth, expelling scorching material into space. As such, it should be round. Yet, our moon comes with strange bulges on its sides. And therein lies the mystery. The bulges are believed to have been formed before the moon's not 200 lemon, though. millionth birthday, when Earth's gravity pulled on the moon's magma, boosting the crust on the ends closest to and farthest from the Earth. But the moon's 6.7 degree tilt remained a mystery. The lemon's points should have pointed directly at Earth when the bulge formed, but now they're 36 degrees off. 
According to research, the thickness of the cooling crust was irregular as the moon moved away from the Earth. The crust became crooked, tilting the moon's axis to its current angle. 8. Space Cuisine What does that mean? Food on early NASA space missions was bland and tasteless, leaving really? some astronauts yearning for something more. Really? So much so that a corned beef sandwich made its way onto one flight. Which was a very bad idea, as it fell apart in space and left the whole cabin full of crumbs. Today, fresh fruit, water, and prepackaged meals get sent to the ISS with an automated spacecraft and includes just about everything the astronauts desire. And now I'm just picturing the tasteless? scene from The Simpsons with Homer eating chips. Na, 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 Wait, na, so you na, can't na. taste in ow, space ow, or something? Ow, ow, ow. Seven, allergy symptoms in space. Uh oh. You would think that an astronaut would be safe from their allergy symptoms in space given that they breathe clean air. And yet, for many of them, the symptoms actually become worse. Huh. New research shows cell activity changes in space, particularly during long missions. This, and the repercussions of weightlessness and the emotional strain of space travel may explain why some astronauts have increased allergy symptoms. 6. We've sent spacecraft to every planet in the solar system. I would have loved yeah. it if we actually set foot on other planets in my lifetime. Mars might still be a possibility, but let's wait and see. Yeah, Mars... We might make it yet, right? We probably won't be alive by the time that happens. While humans have never walked on any of the planets in our solar system, other than obviously the Earth and our moon, robotic spacecraft have visited all of them. And we didn't stop there. Our spacecraft have also landed on several comets, asteroids, and dwarf planets. In fact, comets some too? of them were visited more than once. So it's a case of so close, yet so far, until we make more technological advances. Five, Mercury is shrinking. Mm. Our ever-shifting tectonic plates shaped the planet. This process began approximately 3.3 to 3.5 billion years ago and led to the emergence of mountains, volcanoes, sea vents, and islands. In contrast, the rest of our solar system appears to be pretty static. We have our rocky planets between the sun and us, as well as a couple of massive gas giants behind us. That's why in 2016, scientists were astounded to learn that data from the Mercury Surface Space Environment Geochemistry and Ranging, or MESSENGER, spacecraft showed that relatively hot Mercury think about is it, shrinking due to the same The hotter processes. planets are, the smaller In other they words, are. it hasn't finished forming in the 4.6 nope, billion nope, years since the solar No, no, that still sounds dumb, because Pluto in itself is Makes a planet. what else we've missed. But the gas giants is like, Four. they're cold. Earth is the only planet where water can oh. be present in all three states. And that's what I call an insanely cool fact. I mean... Water is life, is it not? Yes, it is. Water is the only substance that exists in all three states of matter on the planet. Solid, liquid, and gas. If you've been feeling a bit left out in the sphere of universal awesomeness, yeah, it might not help water. to know that Earth is also spray. the only planet where you will find large <laughs> amounts or bodies of water in all three states. So yes, we may not have spring in our feet and winter under our hair, but our water definitely makes up for it. With winter in my hair, that's a reference. I don't know if anyone will get that. Maybe yeah. a couple people. No. Three. Our solar system was formed on a rotating disk of gas and dust. Yes. About 4.6 billion years ago, a shockwave in the Milky Way galaxy initiated the collapse of a solar nebula. The debris clouds solidified into bodies. The sun formed in the center, and the larger bodies, stars, and the beautiful blue rock we call home formed in a thin disk orbiting it. But what triggered it all? That catalyst, according to isotopes found in ancient meteorites, was a supernova. And if a supernova jolted our solar system into existence, supernovae could be spawning new solar systems all over the universe. Yeah. Two, our most distant solar power explorer. If you were looking for something incredibly cool in space, well, <laughs> you found it. NASA's billion dollar Juno spacecraft was launched on August 5th, 2011. Judo. And it arrived at its destination, Jupiter, on July 4th, 2016. Wow. With a maximum velocity Five years. of 165,000 miles or 266,000 kilometers per hour, it's still the fastest man-made object ever created. Crazy. It has sent back a treasure trove of images and new scientific Jupiter data, over three terabits worth, during its 35 Jupiter orbits, all processed by citizen scientists using NASA's first ever camera devoted to public outreach. The solar-powered Juno will keep investigating our solar system's largest planet until September 2025, or until it reaches the end of its life. One, space is not that far away. Yes, it is. I'm not talking about how close we are to the possibility of commercial space travel. No, I'm talking about the Karaman line, 
which defines how little atmosphere there is between the Earth we breathe, talk, walk, and eat on, and where exactly space begins. Oh. If it's something you've okay. been dying to know, I can tell you now, you'll be shocked to hear how near it actually is to us. If you could get in your car and take a vertical drive into the sky at 60 miles an hour, you'd be in space in less than an hour and a half. That's right. Space is only 62 miles or 99 kilometers from where You'd you are. You'd have to be driving fast enough, though, because, of course, the gravity is pretty heavy. Imagine if that was your morning commute. Felix Baumgartner, the crazy daredevil sponsored by Red Bull and GoPro, he did the jump off record the, for the um, highest space jump after he leaped from a stratospheric balloon 24 miles into the air. He only needed 90 minutes to get up there. And thanks to the magic of gravity, his free fall lasted a mere 3 minutes and 48 seconds before he had to deploy his parachute. How about that? So, what are your favorite facts about the solar system? How Let far it is? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification. Yeah, I think that's my favorite part of how, of how far it is. I didn't realize it. Like, if you drove, if you're not, if you weren't bound to the Earth's gravity like that, of course, it's, it's going to take a little bit more power to go 60 to get up to the Earth because it's going to take a little bit more than 62 miles an hour. But an hour and a half. I didn't realize that it took him an hour and a half to fly up there on a balloon and then free fall for three minutes. Interesting. Uh, comment on subscribe down below. It's your boy Black Finesse. We are out.